Welcome, dear listeners and dear viewers, to another episode of the Unseen Process of Recruiting, What Happens After You Click Submit. Today, we have a return guest, Franca Diana. Hi, Franca. And Greg, of course, my gracious host, co-host. Hey, Greg. Hey, Franca. Today, Hi. we're going to talk about the newbie applicant, right? Um, there's a lot of perceptions out there about when someone is just either graduating from a uh, two-year or four-year college, or perhaps they've taken a hiatus for whatever reason, and now they're looking for a job. And so we want to call them the newbie applicant, right? Um, let's talk about the misperceptions of a newbie applicant. Franca, why don't you why don't you start us off? What what do you find is commonplace that we that you encounter as a recruiter? The newbies probably are classified as not having experience or hands-on experience that I think an organization would prefer. Um, you know, for any any given opportunity there. However, it, if it's an entry level role there could be some consideration for a newbie. But I think maybe the newbies are looked upon as not having the right experience, which we don't want to give that impression. No. Not yeah. At all. Not yes. At all. Greg? I think one of the biggest um, uphill battles we see on entry level is, or newbies or um, whatever term we want to use, organizations not realizing what that actually means. I think a lot of times um, we'll get a job requisition in for entry level and then there's a list of experience that they want and that's not a entry level candidate. And um, I think it's funny, there's a lot of times on social media, you'll always see that meme how uh, you know, that entry level candidate sitting on one side of the desk and on the other side you have the hiring manager with 15 different rec requisitions that they want for the role and they're calling it entry level. So um, I think there's a big loss of translation <laughs> you know what you bring up an excellent point greg in terms of the definition of entry level uh, a newbie candidate um yes i have seen a lot on linkedin individuals complaining particularly in recruiting or human resources that the position that is being advertised is not accurate right mm -hmm. So they claim they want something who, someone who's entry level and that's absolutely, absolutely not the case. Mm -hmm. What do you suggest for individuals that come across a scenario like that? Um, I mean, at that stage, there's not much you can suggest because it's, it's in the hands of a hiring manager. They're making that ultimate decision. Um, when we're involved, we can sit there and we can redefine what entry level is and set that expectations from the start. Um, oftentimes when I'm taking in a job order and they didn't say it's entry level, it'll take someone that's just starting out. Um, I, I define what that means. Okay, so that just means they need the basic maybe education to it, or they just need to have the technical skills or some basic computer skills or whatever it may be. Um, but I also wanna throw in there, it's a two way road because a lot of times candidates on the entry level side lose the concept of what entry level is. and um, I know that's another challenge a lot of times you'll see and uh, they go in on an interview and they don't realize that it's what entry level really entails. And I think um, Franca could really speak about that because she's been on the media side at some point. So she saw entry level with interns. Right. Yes, yes, yes. And in terms of suggestions, we could always suggest to a hiring manager, we have a very bright college grad right now that is groomable and we feel is a very sharp candidate for your organization. So we could make a suggestion and maybe be a little pushy for lack of a better word and, and suggest to that hiring manager, just take, just take even a phone call with the candidate, you know, and now with Zoom meetings and, and telephone calls being even more accepted, you don't have to necessarily have a candidate leave their home, go for an in-person interview and take up too much time of a hiring manager's time, you know, a hiring manager's time. I think if a hiring manager is willing to speak with an entry level candidate, they would be surprised um, how well a candidate could do that's entry level, just graduating out of college. And if they have an internship, like Greg had mentioned, an internship is very invaluable. It's really hands-on experience for a college student 
to get hands-on experience when they're in the real world, let's say. And in the music business that I did start out in, in, in radio, we hired a lot of interns. And I think individually an intern, when, when a candidate does go for an intern, it shows a lot about that, that person because most of the time internships are not paid financial. They're not paid money. They're paid for their time. They're paid to do things. And they're, they're, their pay is basically the experience that they're getting. But that's invaluable. It, it, it could be worth more than any hourly rate, let's say, they would get. Because when it comes down to it, I think when a company's hiring, they'll look more favorably upon the candidate that did do an internship that shows they're willing to do something, give their time and work, not necessarily for money, but to get the experience. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, from the perspective of internships, I can attest that that's what I did throughout my college years, right? Mm -hmm. I paid and it helped me gain the experience that yes. I needed and also helped me become familiar with different workplace settings. Um, mm -hmm. So for those individuals who are recently graduated or about to graduate and are thinking about their first employee, you know, if you have an opportunity to, to take on an internship, take it. Now, interestingly enough, we're in the virtual world now. Yes. So your internship may look substantially different than perhaps a year or two ago where it was more traditional and you went in person. Um, mm -hmm. What suggestions do you both have on an individual taking on a virtual internship? I would even go above and beyond and say past the virtual internship. I mean, there's so many different routes where I think an entry level candidate could pick up experience, whether it's doing volunteer work. Um, a lot of times you can pick up so many things in a nonprofit volunteering, whether it's uh, interpersonal skills, it's technical skills, uh, you, you get your hands dirty on certain things, you can do that virtually a lot of times. Um, even if it's doing uh, cold calls for proper reason for uh, um, a nonprofit fundraising, um, and things like that, that's picking up customer service skills. Uh, since we are kind of in a virtual world right now, you could do different training. Uh, you can look on LinkedIn, different sources like that. There's so many different groups. There's, I know even if they're in college, there's uh, different on, on the investment side, finance, there's always finance groups. They have the, the, um, the mock investment funds, things like that. There's so many different routes where they can create skills that could be translated into their real job or their first world their first world job yeah i agree not only do virtual internships provide an opportunity but definitely the others you've mentioned greg hands down franca in listening to all the choices that greg uh provided right what would be some key underlying suggestions you'd have for how to do those roles well virtually? I think virtually it, it is a bit more challenging virtually than being on site because virtually you will, you'll utilize your telephone making phone calls and you also will utilize your computer having Zoom meetings and perhaps having somebody at that company telling you what to do um, or helping you and if you're doing a Zoom meeting together that they're training you I think that's that that's great. That's positive, but it does make it more challenging for a person to actually be on site in the company to see exactly what's going on at that location, who's doing what, how who how they answer the phone, how they do calls, how they have in person meetings, basically how they run the operation. So I think with an internship, I think the 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 virtual makes it a little more challenging. I think being on site is really the way to go. And I know once things clear up with the virus, you know, we'll be getting back to, to business, let's say, so that you could actually see what's going on. You know, and, and I know interns, when they are on site, they're doing a lot what an actual employee would be doing at the company. So interns aren't necessarily getting the coffee. I mean, you know, it, yes, they can, but it, it really isn't like that. They're given tasks that a normal paying employee would be given. I've seen it. So, you know, depending on how they carry that out. So I think the, the virtual is just a little challenging right now for an internship, quite frankly. I think there's nothing better than actually being 
on site in the company, walking in the door, seeing who comes in and out of that that door, in addition to the people that you work with there. Yeah, absolutely. This is that's definitely interesting from the perspective that it is an adjustment. Um, there are there are opportunities out there, and I've definitely seen uh, some of my clients take them on, whether it's an apprenticeship or internship. And what I would say is. Uh, some really helpful tips from us would be make sure that if whether it's in person or online, you show up on time. Make mm -hmm. sure that your attire is adequate and appropriate for the setting, right? Um, yes. Make sure your resume looks good, right? It may be a beginning resume, but make sure that it's spelled that the spelling and everything, the content is accurate. Um, mm -hmm. Also, lastly, just as Franca mentioned, rightfully so there are challenges online and it could be just with connectivity. Make sure your connectivity <laughs> is tight and works well. So those are suggestions that we have in the event that you have an opportunity to do an internship and are not sure how to put your best foot forward. Now, when you go in person, obviously there are others, other considerations to make and uh, we'll have an episode on that. <laughs> but going back to um, something that uh, Greg said, Actually, uh, Frank, I believe you said it as well. Maybe we all said it. In terms <laughs> of experience, there's a perception that new applicants don't have experience. And I actually can say that you can go on any work that you perhaps have done previously, whether it's at a Dunkin' Donuts, whether it's working at an event. All the experience that you've done can help you have transferable skills that you can bring to the table. Can you both elaborate on that? Sure. I mean, prior to joining the family business, I did five years at Bed Bath Beyond. Really? It was, yeah, it was the best training I've ever had. I mean, you learn customer service, you learn corporate, you learn how to multitask. Um, and personally, I love talking to candidates that are entry level that maybe worked at retail throughout their college, um, their college career. It's great experience um i'm trying to think like other things uh, trans uh, just anything you could even if someone's good at technology if they're good at graphics they can go on sites like fiverr.com and do some gig work if you're successful doing some of these things virtually as well just to elaborate on your last point it shows that you can work independently you could teach yourself um and i think that's a little bit more appealing for companies when they're hiring entry level because they realize this person maybe will catch on quick or they may not require as much handholding or they could be um, independent. But there's just, there's so many different ways to highlight skills that could just, you could just work off of and grow a career from. Hands down, Franca, you mentioned that you were in entertainment and media prior to becoming a recruiter. Can you think of one transferable skill that you acquired there that you brought into ACG? Yes, and this might sound very simple, but what about picking up a telephone and just calling somebody? There you go. It's, okay, it, and that's what internships, even, even you know, Greg, you mentioned you were working at another company. I'm sure your dad had you answering the phones at the time, you know, with, a, with ACG, even though you were still full-time. So I think that, um, you know, yes, it is a good thing to, to get that experience but I also think that you should give a, give give somebody an opportunity to show what they could do. And any student, let's say that while they're working in college, like you mentioned, working at Dunkin' Donuts, a place like that will teach you how to answer the phone, how to greet people when they walk in a door, basic common uh, courtesy and, and being human and greeting people and saying thank you and how could I help you. All those skills are transferable. And if you have a student that's not working or just goes you know, from school into a job, they may not feel comfortable. They may feel a little intimidated or shy. So I think any type of job, especially, and, and we see a lot of younger people, they hide behind the phone. They do not wanna call you, they email you. And I feel a phone call is more effective, speaking with somebody, hearing their voice, talking to them, also, when you speak to a person, you get an instant 
it's an instant answer. You're flowing better. Emails, they, they, I think a lot of people tend to hide behind them. So just, just answer the telephone. Basic skills is what we really need, I think. And once you start with that, you could expand on those. That's absolutely, I, I mean, I have a really, I, I want to say something. Greg, go ahead. Yeah, no, I mean, to a point, even back when I worked in retail and we had email in a mm -hmm. district or regional, you learn sometimes you can't put things in an email because the tone may not deliver right or you, right. Learn, you know, don't send an email out of emotion. So to that point, I think it's great that that, that person learns how to interact, how to actually pick up the phone, how to have those interpersonal skills. Another great point, I think when someone shows that they're working throughout college or throughout their educational career, it shows that they can multitask. Um, from an employer's standpoint, it shows that this person knows a work-life balance because throughout work, they also did school. So they knew how to prioritize and they were successful and they were able to get their degree or at least um, maintain great grades and a job that's very transferable into a career. I mean, hands down. So for our listeners and viewers who are just getting in to looking for a job, you've gotten some great suggestions on how to put your best foot forward, right? Don't hide behind no. uh, your email. Express yourself clearly when communicating. You will mm -hmm. have you will have probably a virtual interview, so you must know how to express yourself clearly. And if you and if you're not comfortable, practice, right? Also, don't underestimate the skills you've acquired. Right. I, I right. hear this a lot. Oh, I don't have any experience. Don't negate yourself and embrace the experience you've required. Anything else that we've missed? No, I think that's the great point. I think anyone entry level does have experience and I, I wouldn't call them the inexperienced candidate. I, I would just call it the, you know, transferable experience skills or something along those lines, because it really is even down to being part of organizations and schools. It's all, it's all relevant to being in a corporation. That's right. We all had to start from somewhere, from the beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, you know, consider an internship as an opportunity or other opportunities, volunteer work, as Greg mentioned, yeah. right? Customer service opportunities. Customer service is big now. Everyone is going online. Chances are, even the corporations try to have you speak to a bot, right? You're going to speak to someone. And so you, those are jobs out there that, you know, very well can give you the practice you need in order to work in sales or marketing or what have you. So um, with that, we, we hope that this session was uh, helpful for you, um, the newbie applicant. And if you have any questions, reach out to us. We're getting a lot more viewers, you guys. So this is great. You know, I just want to throw in on the newbie applicants too. I, I should really throw this in. Something when I used to be a manager, I used to tell these college uh, students, treat every role you have as a career. Because you know, you just that switch one day. So even to someone that's applying for an entry level role, you never know where it can go. So just keep that switch turned on that it could be a career. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. great. That's nice great, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's right in the back. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Franca, any any last thoughts? Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. I think uh, Greg hit the nail on the head. And I think, um, you know, anybody that wants to try a new career, that's what an internship is for. Get out there, make yourself seen and network because that's what an internship will get you. Even if they don't hire you at that place, which most likely they will, but even if they don't, do you know how many people you'll meet while you're there? Whether it's you know clients of, of the organization you're at, other people who work there, people maybe who used to work there. So get out there, make yourself seen, and I know it's all about networking. That's right. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, well, this was fantastic. I loved it. Um, Thank you, dear listeners. Thank you, dear viewers, for joining in. Send us a note. Tell us what you think of the show. Tell us a topic perhaps you haven't heard of. Until next time. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Frank. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you.